So Noel, we have a lot of new imaging modalities available to us, whole body MRI, especially diffusion weighted, PSMA um, uh, um, diagnostics. We will likely see earlier diagnosis of bone metastases. Do you think this is clinically relevant? Uh, well, uh, the lid's been taken off Pandora's box and we're not gonna put that lid back on again. So in that sense, it is clinically relevant because people are using it, patients are aware of it, and the problem we have, uh, I think, as an international community, is we don't know what it means. And uh, so if one takes uh, PSMA uh, PET imaging in a country like Australia, where it's cheap and everybody's getting it, um, there's a big issue relating to interpretation, stage migration, and so on. The other side of the coin is uh, that in whole body MRI, um, it's very resource consumptive. It takes a long time. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, reporting time of the radiologist, and it's very expensive. And I think it's fair to say that we don't know what some of those lesions are either, and there's no real way of accessing it, um, unless it's a big MET, in which case you would expect to pick it up on some other imaging modality. So that leaves us with the question of what do we do with it. Um, and I think that we'll have to feel our way with it. In some circumstances, we're able to test it out against standard imaging, we have a new arm plan for the Stampede study where we're looking at basic scanning, which is bone scan and CT, and there'll be a parallel group who will have had PSMA scans. But that won't determine whether they have the treatment or not. Um, so, so we don't know, and I think there'll be a big stage migration, and I think more patients will get treated when actually they don't get treated, and some patients will not be treated when actually uh, they should have been. Um, it, it calls into question this issue of dormancy, and we've never really understood this. So if we sample bone marrow, for example, in prostate cancer patients and breast cancer patients, we can see cells that are in the bone marrow. We also know that if a patient has a radical prostatectomy, for example, for high-risk disease, up to a third of them will have microscopic metastatic lymph node disease and they won't progress in a high proportion. And we don't really understand that phenomenon. Um, we also see it in bladder cancer where we can take the bladder out one in five will have microscopic lymph node dis uh, disease and a proportion of those will not progress at all. So I think that the reality is it, it is clinically relevant in that it's going to influence practice and people really need to think about whether they should uh, use the standard um, methods for deciding on treatment triggers or whether they will move to PSMA based stuff and I think we'll f fall in the cracks through the middle actually. Yeah. I, I agree, there's a, there's a big danger. So we know, for example, radiotherapy, as we discussed a bit earlier, um, but I think it's worth discussing again in this context. We know for M0 high-risk disease that radical radiotherapy to the prostate improves survival. If you'd PSMA PET scanned a lot of the patients in that trial, they would be metastatic, yeah. which, uh, for sure, and uh, which is why the control arm was rate hormone therapy only, because it was viewed as a metastatic disease already just know where the Mets were. So you would then know a number of those would be metastatic, but they would probably still have benefited, as we now know from the Stampede uh, you know, uh, low-volume metastatic trial. So if you said, right, now this patient's metastatic, we're not going to treat him, whereas if we just did a CT in the bone scan and we are going to treat him, you'd have been, made the wrong decision. Yeah. And so I think we have to, uh, it's kind of a mantra really, if you want to get the results that you saw in the trial, you have to do the same as in the trial. Yeah. So I think if you change the staging modalities, you've got to make very sure that you don't reclassify patients erroneously into the wrong treatment decisions. Yeah, it'd be a real shame if patients uh, yes. missed out on more curative therapy, wouldn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing that will happen with, um, uh, and it's happening anyway with this trend, certainly that we've observed in our centres, to giving less treatments and more imaging, mm -hmm. is that it's going to drive up the use of stereotactic radiotherapy, because that, although the tariffs attached to it in the NHS are quite high, in reality, the cost price of it is is only you near know, three or four thousand probably. And if it's a treatment which turns out to prolong survival as appears to be presented at Astro while we're speaking, yes. then um, it, that's a very cheap way to prolong survival. Yeah, exactly. And, and you're sparing the side effects of long-term systemic therapies. So I think that's the trend that's gonna be driven by more and better imaging is, is more use of stereotactic radiotherapy. And I think the question of whether it's really oligometastatic or not almost doesn't matter. You know, you're treating the three biggest lumps yeah. and the fact that there are a hundred more small ones is still, yeah, they've still got to grow to the point where they're big enough to do something. Yeah, to affect the patient yes. or to cause further metastases, yeah. yeah.